Welcome to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. Here we talk about all the food happenings around Acadiana. If you like food, tune in. You might learn something new. We are in the grips of Mardi Gras season. Uh, Scott, you went to Rio. I did go to Rio. And you said that was pretty much the only parade. You went to one in Mardi, uh, sorry, New Orleans I and did, one and, here and, and, and you're I'm, done. I'm Mardi Gras out. Yeah. Gosh. And I went to one in Sulphur. Uh, I was invited by Lake Charles Tourism yeah. to help judge a King Cake competition in the city of Sulphur. Another this King is, Cake competition? Yeah. I'm, and I'm this done. It's becoming a habit. And I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm retiring out of a king cake competition i would be done for like three years for the future (laughs) this one had 16 16 but it was little tiny bites so that's what made it nice um there was a snow cone king cake does that count as a cake it was the creative category okay and then my favorite was a tiramisu one yeah and had i more room in my stomach (laughs) i would have eaten all of it right uh, it, w- it was it was really nice. And then coming home today, I was inadvertently in the Dusan Mardi Gras parade. And I believe that's happened. This this is the second year in the row that that's happened. Yeah. Because uh, I think this this time last year, I was making a pil- pilgrimage to Billy's and the same thing happened. Why don't you keep you some beads in your back seat? Apparently. And I can case. just throw them <laughs> out of my, my seat, out of my car. But it uh, Lake Charles was fun. Um, yeah. It's booming. You, I there, saw that. There you is said it was. so much economic development happening in that city right now. Uh, so many restaurants are opening. Uh, so so much construction going on. They're about to have a new market that's opening up. Wow. Um, and I, I was there like maybe six months ago, and even from six months ago, it's it's insane. The other thing that was really cool to see, um, I took the back roads to Sulphur, mm-hmm. and there were so many like roadside restaurants and like little dive bars so there's so much of louisiana i have left to Mm -hmm. see yeah um so i have a lot i have a lot of traveling to do this year is what i decided but about that tiffany on tour yeah (laughs) tonight's show is going to be kind of a lake charles theme show uh we're going to have an interview that I did Friday night with Crystal Hines Artigo. I thought she was a food blogger. Um, I met her on Instagram and I actually got to meet her in real life this weekend and we hung out all weekend. Uh, thought she was a food blogger because she has nothing but pictures of food on her Instagram. <laughs> she doesn't. She's just a food lover. Okay. And she eats at all the restaurants in Lake Charles. She knows all the chefs. She knows all the wait staff. She knows everyone by name. They know her because she dies there so frequently. Uh, so we kind of talked to her about the developing culinary scene that's going on there. Um, and then we're going to have um, someone with Lake Charles Tourism call in. Uh, at 6.30 and then at 6.45 we're going to have Lake Charles only mobile food truck Sloppy oh, wow. Taco yes. uh, call in. So it's going to be kind of a Lake Charles themed show so you guys can hear a little bit more about the booming culinary scene that they have going on there. And Crystal told me it's not just food. like they, Their art scene is picking up there as well. So it, it's it's so it reminds me of what Lafayette was like five years ago yeah, when everything was starting here and, and it's happening for them. So it's really cool to see. And then we also have Lauren and Jamal on with a brew to a tea. Uh, tea is supposed to be real big in 2016. So okay. they're going to come on and talk about why you should be drinking tea if you're not drinking tea. But right, everyone tea. should be drinking tea. Everybody. Just saying it. All right. So first up, we're going to get into it since we have a jam packed show tonight. Uh, this is my interview that I did with Crystal Hines Artigo, lover of the Lake Charles food scene. We are going to take a break. And when we come back, we have Lauren and Jamal with a brew to a tea. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPAL. Joining me now is Crystal Hines Artigo, who is a Lake Charles dining enthu- enthusiast. We actually just got finished having dinner at Restaurant Kala, and uh, she's kind of joining me on my culinary tour of Lake Charles this weekend. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. So how long have you lived in the Lake Charles area? Um, since about 1983. So back in the days when it was the last person out of town, shut off the lights to the boom we got now. Yeah, and that's actually something that I noticed last time I came is that the the restaurant scene here is kind of exploding and booming. And, and you agree with that, correct? Absolutely. It, it, but it's not just the restaurant scene. It's, I think it's a little bit of everything. The art scene is, is booming. Um, the restaurant scene is booming. The entertainment venues are booming. It's just all part of the massive growth that Lake Charles is, is experiencing right now. 
So I'm kind of jealous of you because you get restaurant kala at your disposal. And I believe you said you, you eat here almost every Wednesday night, right? We eat here a lot. We eat out every Wednesday night, and this is one of, of the short rotations, and it's so close to the house. It's perfect. Yeah, this is, if for anyone who isn't loca- uh, aware of where it's located, it's in the Walnut Grove uh, development. A, planned, a traditional neighborhood development. So it's a planned uh, development. It's got some great features, and it's going to be really great as it develops. They have... Uh, they're going to have they have art installations in the post office they have concerts planned for the Great Lawn and there's going to be a lot of different great things happening here all the time yeah it's kind of on the idea of River Ranch for mm-hmm. anyone absolutely that's what they're going for okay so what was your favorite thing that you ate tonight oh gosh um, I guess I can't claim my drink the Rumbalaya but um, the crab beignets are always good those goat cheese fritters were fab yes and the Brussels sprouts. Oh, God. Yeah, so we we pretty much got a table full of appetizers and small plates, small plates excuse me, <laughs> and kind of did it up big. The the goat cheese croquettes were, were pretty awesome, um, as were the Brussels sprouts. And the gnocchi. Oh, it was like oh, the gnocchi. I forgot about the gnocchi. Oh, like you said, little pillows of heaven. Yeah, it was pretty good. And then I finished with the chocolate uh, pot de creme and I pretty much inhaled it. I didn't even ask Crystal if she wanted some. I pretty much just ate it all myself. And she had carrot cake and she did offer me some of her carrot cake but I'm not a carrot cake fan so I was like, you can go for it. Even with the sweet pea ice cream I couldn't entice you and it was so good. And I also just had the best gin and tonic of my life. Uh, they do a gin and tonic here with a amber gin, and they do their tonics and syrups in house. So it's it's a pretty fancy drink. It's it's really nice. And the rumbalaya is still my favorite, but the gin and tonic is really awesome. Okay, so if someone was coming to Lake Charles to dine for the first time, besides Restaurant Kahlo, what restaurants would you suggest to them to check out? I would definitely suggest 1910. Um, Which we're going there tomorrow night. Yay. <laughs> um, 1910 is a favorite. Um, 121 Artisan Bistro is a favorite. Um, there, We're going to try the Country Club at the Golden Nugget, which I haven't been to yet, but I'm hearing wonderful things about, so we're going to hit them up for Sunday brunch. Okay, so tell, you were telling me a little bit about the chef that's at the Country Club. He just won an award? He did. All the Landry's property chefs get together. Now, that's the Golden Nugget in Lake, in Lake Charles and in Las Vegas, and I think they have one in Reno or Tahoe, too, and from the other Landry's restaurants, Landry's and the Saltgrass Steakhouses. They get together and they have a cooking competition, and he is the current Landry's Iron Chef. Wow, right here in Lake Charles. Right here in Lake Charles. So, um, what do you love most about living in Lake Charles? Right now, it's witnessing the evolution and growth and um, boom that Lake Charles is going through. Because, like I said, I was here in the days of... um, the slogan of the last person out of town turn off the lights and it was bad the downtown was you know just nothing but trash and vagrants and now downtown is booming it's um it's beautiful it's on lakefront it's it's gorgeous i i love lake charles like this is my second time getting to uh, spend some extended time here and i've i've very much enjoyed both times coming to lake charles And hopefully you'll come back again. Oh, absolutely. I will come back once a month. (laughs) (laughs) And we'll come to Cala once a month. Yes, that'll be our our date. A waiter actually just came to Lake Charles, and I was hoping that Cala was set up with them and that I could order them from Lafayette, but it doesn't work like that. No. Waiters started in Lake Charles. Yes, they did, actually. And have uh, just gone into Lafayette and now into Baton Rouge, too. They started at our seed center. They won a like a That's product true. pitch. Yes. That is that is so true. So we ask everyone that comes on the show what their death row meal is. So your last meal on earth, what would it be? Um might be catered by Kala. Wow. It's it's really a fave. Yeah, it. I mean, it's it's, amazing. it's it's pretty amazing, guys. If you have not been to restaurant Kala, you need to check it out. Absolutely. Would it be just the blue crab beignets, or would you order one of everything on the menu? Uh, if it was my last meal, I would go ahead and order one of everything on the menu. Calories be damned. There you go. I, I like that. I like that mentality. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Crystal. 
Thank you for having me, and thanks for a great day. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and joining me now is Lauren and Jamal uh, behind Brew to a T. Thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. Oh, thanks for having us here. Yeah, thanks for having us. So what made you guys want to bring tea to Lafayette? Because we don't have a tea shop in Lafayette. So what made you guys decide to go into the tea business? Oh, that needs a little bit of background about me and my friend, uh Coming from an Eastern country, when you walk in the house, that's the first thing they ask you is, do you want a cup of tea? So I was like, the always answer from us is always yes. So we moved down here, and that's one of the cultures that was really different. You cannot find a decent cup of tea down here. So you know what? We're going to go in there and start doing it ourselves. We're going to start over down here and do it. And where do you guys get your tea from? Uh, the, we get the black tea from India, uh, the green tea from China, and the Roy was the one I brought for you today. That one can come from South Africa. So you guys ha- started out having a kiosk, which I just love, and I think that is so cute, um, in the Acadiana Mall. Uh, that has closed, but where can go- where can people go and get your tea now? We still have, we're selling tea on our website, brewtoatea.com. You could go ahead uh, online and order it. Uh, we are about to start on Amazon, too, selling it on Amazon. Uh, we also have a few local shops down here in Lafayette that sell our tea. Uh, if you go to the Carpe Diem or Tribe Collective, you could they would serve you uh, our tea down here. Nice. So what has been y'all's best sellers? Uh, I have to say my one of my favorite and the best seller is the Strawberry Kiwi Apple and also Caramel Rooibos. That one's really popular too. I really love that one too. Uh, what about you? My favorite, shockingly, was uh, strawberry kiwi apple, and that was the one that I, I it took me forever to try because I, I don't know it didn't seem like a flavor that I would be into, but then it ended up being my favorite. And afternoon apricot, which was another one that I didn't think I would like, and ended up being my favorite. So, are your teas meant to be enjoyed hot, or can you do them iced? Because the strawberry one sounds like it would be more of like an iced tea to me. Can you do them hot or iced? Or All of our preference? teas can be served hot or cold, depending on your preference. And if you want to add sweetener to it, or some people like to add milk or honey to it, it's just completely a personal preference. I know that, um, Lauren, you had mentioned that you guys have hopes of eventually opening like a shop where you can actually go in and like get the tea served to you. Is that still in the works? To eventually happen it is it's um at this point there's certainly no definite plans it's just kind of a dream um we opened up the the kiosk during the holidays and it was a great way to get the brand out there right you know make people aware that you know that we're here but for the long term we just didn't really see you know the mall being the place but we are definitely interested in possibly opening up some kind of um brick and mortar location in the future um, we need it. I we had a tea place a while back, uh, where you could go in and 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 have tea and do like tea time with the little uh, crumpets and and everything. And it was it was really nice. And it I think it was a little ahead of its time. Um, so it didn't it, it it unfortunately didn't last. But I miss it. I'm an afternoon tea drinker. Um, and also I like tea at night to kind of relax and calm me. Um, which brings me to getting to the difference between caffeinated versus non-caffeinated teas. How can you tell the difference on what's caffeinated and what isn't uh, if you're not if if you're not aware? All right, now uh, we actually in the process of changing our labels, and the new labels comes out. You're gonna see in the front of on the on the can. The first thing you're gonna see the level of the caffeine on it between zero to five. We have few uh, three teas. Uh, they are non-caffeinated, and seven of them caffeinated. Uh, in general, as the tea gets darker, it has higher level of caffeine in it. Black tea and oolong really strong. Green tea a little bit less. And when you go to yellow tea and white tea, they're way less than the other ones. Okay, well that's good to know. I didn't I didn't know that. I learned something tonight. Yay! Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> and that's how actually the process the tea. They, the, the how you process the tea and uh, oxidize it, you're going to have effect on the amount of caffeine you're going to have in it. We also have uh, herbal tea. Uh, when you talk about it down here, but tea, people mean both of them, herbal tea and the, the old traditional camellia tea. Right. Uh, and what we did is we mix the herbal tea 
and the camellia tea together and create a blended tea. So you not also not also not only you get the flavor from stuff you add to it, also you get the other benefit from the herbal tea in the same time. And if you like the caffeine or non caffeinated one, those come together. They give you a, some new option to try. I had um, the lavender one that you guys were selling, and I fell in love with it. It smelled great. Uh, your teas are very fragrant, um, which I, I enjoyed, especially with liking to drink tea for the relaxing nature of it. Um, also, the caramel. I'm going to total butcher this. Robios? Robios? Robos. Robos uh, was a, another one that was a favorite of mine as well. Um, I find that tea is higher in caffeine than coffee and you had like an analogy to kind of describe that it's not coffee okay. has higher amount of caffeine in it the difference is the how fast you absorb it coffee is pretty quick you drink it you feel right away wide awake and you're ready to go and later you're gonna have a crash but with the tea it's like a diesel engine that's how i call it it, when you start drinking it, it takes it takes the time. It takes like thirty minutes to an hour for you to absorb the whole amount of caffeine it has on it. So it gets you up a little bit slower, but you're not gonna have that crash you get from the care, like from the coffee. How would you make the perfect like brew the perfect uh, cup of tea? Take us through that process. Oh well, well, because that, that that's half of the fun is the whole ritual of tea making. That's like an, an art that. Depend on right. what kind of tea you make. As uh, for the darker tea, like black tea, you need a higher temperature. Uh, probably boiling temperature is probably the best option. Let the water get to the boiling temperature, and longer you brew it. I I usually suggest people start with three minutes. If it's a little bit too strong for you, go back, cut back on your time. If you like it a little bit stronger, let it steep a little bit longer. For lighter color tea, like green tea or white tea, you need a little bit lower temp- temperature, well, hot water, and the time wise goes in the same way. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it it's like it's like an art. You have to start making it and then start adding the stuff to it the way you like it. Squeeze a little bit of lemon in it. Next time you make it, put a little bit of bergamot in it. Whatever like you feel like you could do it, that's a good thing with tea. You could try it. You just go in there and change it in the way uh, you like. So experiment and play with it to yeah, find out absolutely. what works for you. And I I typically drink my tea straight. Um, sometimes I'll put a little bit of honey in it or lemon. I know there's some hot teas that you can put cream or milk in, and I'm just not... Doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> I'm not either. I don't like cream. I think that's more like an English yeah, uh, they are, tea they, preparation they, they of it. That with the darker color. You cannot do that with the... Uh, Yellow tea or white tea, but you could do that with the with the black tea. Okay. And tell us once again uh, where people can go to to order your teas. Again, you could go to our website www.brewtoatea.com. Uh, we will be shipping it very quick and next day to you. Also, we are about to start selling on Amazon too. And then Carpe Diem. And also, yeah, you could serve in other local places, Carpe Diem and Tribe Collective. Yeah. Carpe, uh, Carpe Diem, I believe they're carrying a, a few of our flavors, and they serve it in the cafe. Tribe Collective, I think you can either order a cup or you can purchase the retail tins. Oh, okay, through, so they, uh, they actually are serving your tea there, too. I know that there was a restaurant mm-hmm. in town um, that was contact that had contacted me, and I think that they were um, thinking about... Serving your teas, I don't know if they if they did that or not, but I I love that about Lafayette that they're very supportive of their own. Oh, Lafayette is incredibly supportive. That was one thing that um, you know, I I knew it, but until you know we had started this venture, I'd never really experienced it for myself. Just how supportive this community is of small business and local business owners. So that was a a really wonderful thing you know to rediscover about my community through this process. Okay, um, and we've been talking to Lauren and Jamal with A Brew to a Tea. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you for having us. Thank you so much. All right, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we have Megan Hartman with uh, Lake Charles Tourism. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPAL. 
Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku, and uh, about to join us is Megan Hartman with Lake Charles Tourism. But really quickly, I want to tell you guys about a pop-up dinner that's happening next week in Baton Rouge. It's February 5th and 6th. When I went to Boudin Bourbon and Beer, um, I had the pleasure of meeting Chef Tom Ramsey, and he is a chef out of Mississippi. He was telling me that he had just closed his restaurant and is doing pop-up dinners across the United States called Stage, which is really cool. He actually just cooked at the James Beard house with our own chef, Chef Jeremy Connor, who's with Humble Fish and Stellar Salt. Um, so we're fortunate, not coming to laugh yet, but they're going to be in Baton Rouge, um, February 5th and 6th. And you can go online and it looks like it's going to be at uh it's it's called comfort food is the theme of it and it's going to be at the fat cow burger restaurant he's teaming up with uh the the chef at that restaurant um and i think tickets are about a hundred dollars and it's five courses includes cocktails starts at six thirty, dinners at seven thirty, and then you can meet and greet the chefs the following after the dinner so you guys if you're interested um i'm gonna post the link to more information on the on the pop-up dinner at the top of the Lafayette Food Junkie page so you guys can check it out. Um, I'm so excited. Like when he was telling me about it and he also told me that he has a, a Rolling Stone journalist following him around too because oh, they're wow. kind of documenting it because it's almost like rock and roll-ish yeah. that he's doing it. So I think it's cool that, you know, not getting it in Lafayette. I was really hoping he was going to come to Lafayette, but it's still close, Baton Rouge though. is close. Yeah. yeah. All right. So joining me now via phone is Megan Hartman with Lake Charles Tourism. Thank you for joining me tonight, Megan. Thank you. I love how chefs are becoming like rock stars. I know, like, right? Stone following us. I know. I, mean, I love it. I mean, I think that the Food Network and all the things that they've done there are really hyping up the status of stuff and I love it. <laughs> I think Food Network Lake Charles is next on their list because let me Yay! tell you, six months ago <laughs> I went because I felt like it. you guys have a budding culinary scene happening and it was very reminiscent to me of what happened in Lafayette five years ago and then that was six months ago, went back this time. It's kind of exploding and it's not even it finished exploding. How does that feel? No, it's so exciting to be here. You know, I am Lake Charles, born and bred, and um, and to see the growth that we are experiencing from the liquefied natural gas industry, chemical industry, um, all of that is um, growth economically, unlike anything in the country right now. But um, what's cool is that as you know, it's a spinoff from the economy. I mean, we have you know, workers here and lots of building going on and lots of new jobs and great opportunities. But we also have a need for more restaurants and and new chefs are coming here. Um, And and so that's what's so much fun about it. You know, one of the things that from the tourism aspect that we want to try to make sure is that people can still come to Southwest Louisiana and experience that authentic Cajun cuisine but we're also seeing an infusion of um, a, a different twist and different takes on that. And a little upping the ante and a little upscale dining as well. So I know that um, you experienced Restaurant Cala while you were here. And so uh, it's one of my favorite new restaurants in town. You know, Cala stands for Calcasieu, Louisiana, short for that. So I think it's um, super, super neat that he was able um to have that take uh, on a local restaurant here. Right. And I tell people in Lafayette that they need to go experience this restaurant because it's there's nothing like it in Lafayette. There's almost nothing like it in New Orleans as well. It's it's kind of just in a breed of its own and to see from dining at his restaurant 6 months ago to and we we went on a Saturday night and we got a table fairly quickly. Last we went on a Friday night this time. There was like maybe a 30 minute wait. And then we found out last night, a Saturday night, the wait was three hours to get a table. Wow. So that's how much wow. how big his restaurant has taken off. And then one of the chefs that was in his kitchen now opened his own restaurant, 1910, which is uh getting a lot of buzz and accolades as well. Yeah, I love 1910. Um, 
they were just posting pictures on Facebook the other day. Oh, it's amazing. You know, everything is fresh and, and really great. And, you know, about Cala, I have to go back because <laughs> I have to talk about it one more time because it's not just the food that Chef David Sorrells puts out, but also um, the drink, right. the bartenders, you know, like even like so much attention is to detail is taken in that restaurant from all of fresh fruit juices that they use. If it isn't fresh, they aren't making it. Um, the ice for each drink is specific. And so all made in house. So I mean, everything is um, carefully thought about, sought after. And um, and the same thing with 1910. And, you know, the thing about 1910 is, oh gosh, it's beautiful. It the is. Setting, it's gorgeous. It's, yeah, you can just overlook um, the beautiful um, green copper-topped courthouse that we have downtown. And I love, you know, being from Lake Charles, I love the historic tie-in. From We had a great fire in downtown Lake Charles in 1910, and it burned um, seven city blocks. And so uh, kind of a throwback to that history as well. And there's been such revitalization downtown and so much development happening. Uh, and then besides that, you guys are about to get another market. Uh, you're, you're getting like a gourmet food market. Um, is that correct? That's right. That's right. Yes. And it hasn't opened yet. It's on um, what used to be called South Ryan, now on Dr. DeBakey Drive. And so I can't wait for that to open as well, right down the road from 121 Artisan Bistro, which is another great restaurant in town, too. I am so excited for you guys because I remember what it was like witnessing this in Lafayette five years ago. So I know that feeling um, and that that buzz and excitement for everything. So I, I'm enjoying seeing it happen for you guys from knowing what it was like uh, when it happened for Lafayette. Yeah, yeah. And so we appreciate you coming out and uh, coming to the Sulphur King Cake Taste Off. The City of Sulphur just had their uh, first Mardi Gras parade uh, two years ago. So this was the second annual for a small town of Sulphur. Uh, but this year they added the King Cake Taste Off. And so that was a fun event, too. It drew, drew a big crowd. Right. The, oh. the line was out the door for people I because know. they gave away free King Cake people the the general public could go and taste the the king cake and then they got to vote as well um on on their favorites and it was out the door they had us up the line was crazy right yeah, they had us crazy. upstairs like sequestered away from everyone <laughs> like we couldn't even talk to the to the bakeries or anything like they they brought us in really quickly because we had to judge on like best decorated or something but they were like we don't want you to talk to them and then they like sh- quickly shipped us back upstairs <laughs> to judge the king cake competition <laughs> so it was you know king cake is similar to boudin where everyone has of course and and gumbo for that matter right well. everybody has their own recipe that they like whatever they grew up eating and so uh it can get pretty intense so how did you do because i know two weeks ago when you were in lafayette you know it, you had your first king cake taste off there yeah and um and you had a lot of sugar <laughs> yeah i wasn't so feeling how, how did you do? <laughs> i wasn't feeling too great i left pretty sure. quickly uh, to make it back to my hotel room afterwards and I just drank a lot of water. <laughs> my mom actually said I'm going to have to start packing like a food rider medicine kit uh, with it. like with like Pepto and like antacid tablets and, oh and gosh, stuff yes. like that. Uh, That's what we do on our we host a lot of um, travel riders in Lake Charles and, and we always keep, we call it a success kit and it's full of like Imodium and pumps <laughs> and uh, Tylenol for those hangovers. So we, we, uh, we know <laughs> from experience what people who might not be used to eating at the quantities that we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. And now that you've had your second go around at the king cake taste off, you'll know. <laughs> right. I think I'm retiring from king cake, oh, okay. uh, judging <laughs> at least for this year, at least, at least for this year. <laughs> Um, and yeah. then when I was there, they they invited me to come back to to judge Buddha Wars, which oh I'm excited about Boudin that. Wars is, it's crazy. Are you coming? Yeah, I I told them okay. I was I was so down to come and judge. That I love Buddha, and I can I can eat Buddha and not get sick. It's just the sugar for some reason it that is, does it to it me. Is. 
Yes, it is. No, uh, the Booty Awards is um, like King Kate times like 50. Right. Um, anyway, and there's a huge car show that they do, the Stars and Stripes car show. Um, it's in September. And anyway, Booty Awards is like, it is a coveted title. And uh, some of those folks from the Lafayette boot dance shops should come down this over to compete in it this year. Yeah. <laughs> we should make it across yeah. Acadiana. Do you, that would be so yeah. huge. That would be yeah, so yes, huge. Absolutely. So for <laughs> so for anyone who has never been to Lake Charles, what would be um, three restaurants that you would say, like, they have to go and try that would best represent uh, what is going on right now in Lake Charles? You know, one of the things that I think people forget about are, are the wonderful opportunities in our casino resorts to try. Um, you know, I love Seth Lyle Broussard and what he's doing at Jack Daniels Bar and Grill at LaBear's Casino Resort. Um, you know, one of the things about LaBear's is that they allow their chefs to um, really create the types of dishes that they want to. Oh, wow. And so Lyle is from Southwest Louisiana, and so he's making his own boudin. He's making his own sausage. Um, he grew up, you know, fishing and doing the trail rides, and so he loves the fresh seafood right from, you know, Calcasieu Parish and Cameron Parish. And so he's putting those specials on the menu at Jack Daniels. And so um, there's some amazing things that he's doing over there. Also, um, Southern favorites at LaBear. So don't forget about the casino resort experience as well. And then, um, you know, Restaurant Cala, like you mentioned, 1910. I love 121 Artisan Bistro, some of the ones that we've talked about. And then, um, you know, for seafood, my favorite is uh, Seafood Palace. Okay. Like Charles and I. I always tell people it's not a palace, but <laughs> the food is amazing. And it's definitely off the beaten path. It's on Enterprise Boulevard, um, downtown Lake Charles. But um, but I love Seafood Palace. So those would be some of my, I don't know, I named four or five. Some of my favorite go-tos for food in southwest Louisiana. Megan, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you so much for inviting me back uh, to check out Lake Charles. I- I'm I'm loving it. I'm I really am. And I'm really excited for what's going on there. Well, I'm so glad to have finally met you in person. Yeah. And um, yeah. And if anybody wants to check out um, our restaurant scene and things to see and do, just go to visit org. We would love uh, to see more folks from Lafayette in Lake Charles. All right, we are going to take another break. And when we come back, uh, we have Sloppy Taco coming on. So come back to us. It's the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Available. Visiting Here's a tip angels. from Pocolari Spa. Struggling with acne, wrinkles, and or clogged pores? Here's a simple tip that can help. If you sleep with makeup, you may want to consider taking time to wash it off. Sleeping in your makeup can cause unnecessary exposure to free radicals in the environment which the makeup adheres to. Free radicals cause the breakdown of healthy collagen, resulting in fine lines on the skin. Makeup also clogs pores while you sleep, causing acne. Take off all makeup before bed to help improve your skin. For more tips and advice from Kokolari, visit this Town Square Media Radio Station's website. This month, just in time for Valentine's Day, purchase a $100 gift card and get a $20 gift card free, plus a free gift from our friends at Indulge. Valentine's Day is in the bag with this perfect combo. Kokolari is relaxing and rejuvenating, making it the perfect gift for anyone. Call Kokolari today to schedule your appointment at 337-769-7546 or visit kokolarispa.com. Who was your hero when you were a kid? Whether it was Joe DiMaggio or Jackie Robinson. Rosa Parks or Sally Ride. Bogart or Brando. You're just the right age to do something important that you can be remembered for. Even if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, or beyond, you can register to become an organ and tissue donor. Surprised? You shouldn't be. Today, people of all ages and even with health conditions can sign up to donate the gift of life. And it's so important. Every age, every ethnicity is needed. If we all signed up, imagine the lives we could save. The families we could help. So whether you admire John Wayne or James Dean, Robert Redford or Roberto Clemente, Elvis Presley or Ella Fitzgerald, do something important that could make a real difference and change lives. Get the facts today and register to become an organ donor. Find out how at organdonor.gov. 
or call 1-866-99-DONATE. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. Women now make up 37% of the workforce, changing their role forever. Harvard Medical School has now opened its doors to new female applicants. The first woman is now in space. The majority of last year's doctorate degrees were earned by women. We've come so far, but our news is changing for the worse. More women die from heart disease and stroke than men, even though it can be prevented. Make a change at GoRedForWomen.org today. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women. Welcome back to the Lafayette Food Junkie Show on News Talk 96.5 KPEL. I'm your host, Tiffany Deku. And joining us via phone is Brett with the Sloppy Taco Food Truck, Lake Charles' only mobile food truck. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Brett. Thank you for having us. So, in us, the yeah, Sloppy Taco family. Yeah. So, okay. I got to have the tacos for the first time. I've been following you guys for a while on Facebook. I uh, uh-huh. got to have them at the Sulphur. Uh, Mardi Gras festivities and it was great. Um, I think at one point somebody told me the lines were kind of crazy. Did you feel like they it, got crazy? No, it didn't feel that way. We moved, we moved through them pretty quickly these days. We finally figured out how to do it. So uh, <laughs> we like, we like long lines. Yeah. L- uh, for a restaurant, l- long lines are good. Uh, are you originally from the Lake Charles area? Yes. Yeah. Born and raised over here. So what made you want to start a food truck? Um, you know, I kind of always wanted a restaurant. Never thought that I would actually really do it. I have five kids, and we're, we've got crazy lives. And, you know, we kind of, last year, the beginning of last year, uh, wanted to do something different and saw the opportunity over here in the lake area. Obviously, y'all been talking about it all evening. Um, I figured we'd just do it. And you know? were you surprised by the like by the response? And and how does it feel to be have a restaurant happening at, at this time of this economic and restaurant boom in Lake Charles? Uh, we I'm very surprised um, and fortunate to to have the success that we've already had. You know, and we couldn't have done it without the support of the local people. They've they've been so so awesome. Um, and yeah, right now it's like the best time for anybody that wants to do something cool and are willing to work at it, you know, go ahead and do it. Yeah, I, and I, I found out about um, another, it's a cart, but it's uh, Pop and Rock, Pops and Rockets. Pops it's, and Rockets, yeah. Yeah, it's like a little popsicle cart and they name, it was so it was so cool, they name all of their popsicles after 80s and 90s songs. Yeah. And so they, they, I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, yeah, they're really cool, and they, they've been very helpful with us getting kind of started. Uh, uh, Robbie Austin and Nick Ballone, they've, uh, they're pretty cool dudes, and they got a good thing going, too. Yeah, I, um, Crystal was actually telling me that they're going to have like a little cart, our little freezer at the new market that's, that's about mm-hmm. to open there, too. I know a lot of people are excited about that. And you guys yeah. are about to go brick and mortar. Yes, yes. We, well, we've, we've purchased a place... Um, around cousins on Kirkman street in Lake Charles. And it's kind of, it's, it's, um, it's a commissary for the food truck. Cause you have to have that. And that's right. Kind of stuff. That's why we're the only, uh, kind of technically the only food truck roaming around the streets. Uh, cause you have to have a commissary in turn means you have to have a restaurant basically. Um, so yeah, we're transitioning and doing both as of two weeks ago. And it's, it's crazy. It's fun, but it's crazy. Are you going to keep the food truck too? Or are you just going to do brick yeah. and mortar where you're going to, you're no. going to still do both? Yeah, we're going to do both. Oh yeah. And you guys aren't unfamiliar to laugh yet. Uh, you, you said you had come out to the East kitchen food truck roundup back in October. Yeah. And then you guys um, are, are going to be featured in a Katie and a profile magazine. That's yeah. I believe tomorrow it comes out, I believe. Oh, wow. They did, um, they did a fe- feature on your food truck. Yeah, yeah, they did that, and that was that was really cool of them to do that for us, and I'm excited to 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 go buy one tomorrow. So anyone who's never, for us and well, for m- most of Lafayette, uh, tell us about the food that you guys serve on the Sloppy Taco food truck. 
Uh, it's kind of a, a fusion of all kind of different things. Um, you know, we have Asian meets, you know, South American slash Creole and kind of just make it, you know, interesting for, for people to come up to the truck and try different things that they might not normally try, you know. And, uh, yeah, just have a wide variety. We change things all the time using local, you know, seasonal stuff and just try to make everything taste good. Uh, I was looking online at your menu, uh, and I was seeing that you guys offered cabbage as as a wrap. Do you guys still yeah. offer that? Okay. Oh, you, yeah. You yeah. Just, and I, I like that, and it's good for people who are kind of maybe trying to be a little healthy. And then something somebody was mentioning that it, with fish tacos, that's a little more traditional um, of what right. you would eat the fish tacos with. Right. You can kind of pick and choose. We got, you know, corn, flour, or the cabbage leaf. And um, it's the cabbage leaf. It's it's surprisingly good on any of them, really. And it's just you know nice and light, and you get the nice crunch, and doesn't get as soggy, you know, with the tortilla if you got to run and you don't eat it right away. What has been y'all's bestseller? The sloppy taco. Okay, and what is that? That is braised pork, but with a uh, grilled steak and grilled shrimp in like a chipotle glaze with uh, Monterey Jack cheese, our house-made ramelade, uh, purple onions, and jalapenos. Nice. I've heard good things about the sloppy taco. And Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, what, where are some of your favorite places to eat around the Lake Charles area when you're not working? Uh, well, it's funny y'all are talking about Kala. We were there Friday night, I believe, when... When you were there. Yes, I think uh, <laughs> you had commented on my Instagram picture yeah. about that. I think we got, yeah. you said we got like almost the exact same things. Yeah, I think we got like 17 small plates. Oh, wow. <laughs> Y'all yeah, beat us. It, <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, I could have ate more too. It was, it was, it was very, very, very good. I like what they're doing over there. It's so good. Yeah, Crystal sent me home with the leftovers. Uh-huh. Um and I was I was pretty excited later on that night uh to eat the the leftover yeah. Jessica General Jessica's chicken wings. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I ate that the Brussels good. sprouts for breakfast. Yeah, we had we had both of those, the crab and yays. It was yeah, we're we're doing Cal is liking us right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this <laughs> this show especially. Yeah. So no, it, that that's one of the places, and then another place, uh, Mazin Mediterranean. That's where I started cooking when I was like seventeen years old. We actually uh, have uh, one of those in Lafayette. Yeah, yeah. My buddy uh, Rock Donaldson runs that over there. Um, yeah, that, that that's uh, that's my my go to place when I want to feel all warm and fuzzy and eat something delicious. I go there. Um, for instance, I went last week. It was my birthday, and I went there for. For my birthday dinner. Nice. I like their Lebanese food that they do there. Um, I kind of wish like they would do more, uh, and they may do that with the Lake Charles location, mm-hmm. um, more with the Lebanese food. Yeah, it's uh, he kind of it's it's more southern with a little bit of Lebanese. Yeah, no, totally. Like these days, people are all over the Lebanese Mediterranean stuff. So. Right. All right. um, but yeah, where can people go uh, to get more information on the food truck? Uh, you guys are on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, uh, Sloppy Taco uh, LC. Well, I'm sorry, Sloppy Taco Truck dot com. I was about to give away our email address, but uh, yeah, Sloppy Taco Truck dot com is our website, and that is linked up to a little deal that will just post every. Uh, every week, our schedule for the truck. Do y'all post throughout the week, or do y'all got do y'all just post once, like where y'all's location is going to be for the week? No, we'll do um, like Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening post for the week, and then every day, kind of post uh, some stuff or where we're at, and if there's some stuff, something new that we're going to put on the menu, or um, you know, we we offer like special deals. Uh, you know, like catchphrases. If you come up to the truck and you're you're part of our email, uh, you'll get a, a catchphrase and you can get like a little discount. Oh, nice. Well, thank you so yeah. much for joining us tonight, Brett. 
No, thanks for having me. All right, that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. This has been Tiffany Deku on News Talk 96.5 KPL, and this has been the Lafayette Food Junkie Show. Thanks for listening, and as always, happy eating, Acadian.